Hi everyone, it's Joe. Welcome to our final lecture of week three of PC Neurobiology in our online platform. The paper we're going to talk about today came out of my laboratory at Providence College, and except for me, all of the other authors are PC graduates. They all took neurobiology with me, and they all spent a summer or two working with me up at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, and also, of course, work with me in my laboratory during the academic year for a couple of years. The first author, James Stevenson, just sent me a text two weeks ago. He's finishing medical school this semester, and he just matched his residency at UMass. The second author, Eliza Conti, finished a master's degree, and she's in the process of applying to medical school for this coming fall. Riley Walsh finished her PhD in neuroscience from Brandeis about a year ago. Paul Poinamani is already a doctor. He's been out for a few years. Brianne Scollins is a registered nurse, and Colin Samariski is a doc. So it ended up being an all-star team. Of course, I didn't realize that uh, back then when we were doing the work, but I'm very proud of all of them and they did a great job on this paper. When the work by Kamal came out, of course, it was very exciting, as I had mentioned, for anyone working on motor proteins or those working on APP and Alzheimer's disease. I mean, it was a, an interesting finding and I thought that our group would be uniquely suited since we had worked on motors to try to figure out whether APP could be involved in the transport process. So what did we do? We decided to work again on the squid giant axon because it was an excellent model to study transport. And I mentioned before that if we take a look at the axon, like this, with the dendrites, in squid, it's very easy to dissect out just this portion of the molecule, the axon, because it's very large. It's about one millimeter in diameter. And you can see it with your eye. And we looked at the Jay-Z Young videos, and it turns out that if you have the axon, you can squeegee out the cytoplasm, which I think I also mentioned before. So you can take like a glass rod and press it down against the cell membrane and squeegee out the cytoplasm by rolling this glass rod along and squeezing the cytoplasm out like toothpaste out of a tube. And so our first experiment, which was done by Eliza, we had a, a mound of axoplasm, or cytoplasm, and we would rest a slide for the electron microscope called a grid on the surface of the cytoplasm and when you pull it off and flip it upside down, you'd have a, it's a circular uh, slide, and you'd have a thin layer of cytoplasm on the on this grid. And Eliza then added a substance that would stabilize the microtubules, which is called taxol, so that the microtubules don't depolymerize. And we added some AMP, PMP, which you know is a non-hydrolyzable ATP analog, which links the kinesin to the road, the kinesin to the microtubule. And in doing so, it also links the vesicle, because the vesicle is attached to the kinesin, either directly or indirectly, for instance, through APP if you go along with the Kamal paper. And then she used antibodies to label APP. So 
the primary antibody would bind APP and the secondary antibody was conjugated to a fluorescent molecule in this case, which was green fluorescent protein. Then she used a second antibody raised in mouse. This one was raised in rabbit and this one was raised in mouse against tubulin, that is the monomers that make up the microtubules, and the secondary antibody was labeled with a red fluorescent molecule. So she labeled the microtubules red and the amyloid precursor protein green. Now if you look at figure one, you can see microtubules within the cytoplasm. I mean, you don't see the rest of the cytoplasm because they're not fluorescently labeled, but you can see microtubules in red, and then you can see APP dotting the microtubules, which suggests to me anyway, or to us, that the APP could be associated with those vesicles that are attached to microtubules. Of course, there's some that are also free on the grid, and they're not exclusively on the microtubule, but some of them indeed are associated with the microtubule, and, and uh, we know that the vesicles are attached through kinesin uh, to the microtubules, so it suggested that the APP might also be associated with those organelles, or interestingly, that they're associated with the microtubules one way or another. Then we decided to do some biochemistry. So we extruded more cytoplasm, or axoplasm, from squid giant axons, and we diluted it in buffer. That's our milkshake. What's so nice about working with the squid axoplasm is it's very simple to obtain, and you couldn't obtain pure axoplasm from any other source, so it's very elegant to be able to just squeegee out the toothpaste out of the tube, and you have a very pure substance the inside contents of an axon. And we centrifuge this over a sucrose density gradient. So this is identical to what Bruce did in his paper and what I did in the Kinesin 3 work. I, of course, learned this technique from Bruce. He was a great teacher. And there are three concentrations of sucrose, 12%, 15%, and 45%. And you layer your diluted axoplasm onto the top of the gradient. And then you centrifuge it at very high speed. And what you would get is the vesicles in the 15% layer here. Like so. And this we would call the supernatant. And in this paper, instead of calling this vesicles, we called it organelle fraction. Okay, but again, it's the vesicles the vesicles that contain kinesin-3, in this case, as you'll recall. And then we ran a protein gel, very simple, and we have a soup and an organelle, and you just get this crazy banding pattern because there's a lot of proteins in both samples, both the supernatant and the organelle fraction. And then we did a Western blot. So we ran a gel identical to this, of course, and then we put a piece of nitrous cellulose behind it and ran the electricity through the gel and onto the 
nitrocellulose. So we had a copy of the banding pattern on nitrocellulose. Sorry, let me erase this. This. And again, this was the supernatant, and this was the organelle fraction. And we added antibodies against amyloid precursor protein to this piece of nitrocellulose, of course, in solution. And the primary antibody binds to APP, and the secondary antibody is conjugated, in this case, to something that turns purple. And what we found is a huge band of APP in the organelle fraction. So the APP co-purifies with the vesicles. And it couldn't be there in that fraction unless it were attached to the vesicles because it's a small molecule. And if it weren't attached, it wouldn't be heavy enough to make it down to this layer. It would be instead in the supernatant. So this was nice evidence that APP was associated with axoplasmic organelles. The one thing I forgot to mention, of course, is that to see this banding pattern, this gel needs to be stained. So if you just ran the proteins out in the gel, as you guys know, they would be invisible. So they add a liquid stain called Kumasi, which is blue. And if you incubate the gel in the Kumasi for a half an hour or so, and then wash it off, you end up with a blue banding pattern. And of course, we scan the blue and then we turned it into a black and white image for the paper because we didn't need blue. Black and white was fine. So the other interesting aspect is our work is very similar to the Green Guard paper. You'll recall that they purified clathrin coated vesicles and showed that APP co-purified with those vesicles. Uh, in our case, we show that APP co-purifies with axoplasmic organelles isolated from the squid axon. We took our work, though, one step further than Green Guard, and we decided to try to immunolabel the vesicles directly. So again, we had, whoops, why it does that? We had our test tube of purified vesicles in the 15% layer. I'll just redraw this, 12, 15, and 45. And the vesicles or organelles are here. And you can remove these by taking a syringe and the needle has a bevel like this. And you can just poke it through the plastic and then draw the syringe and just suck these guys off like that. It's very simple. And we took our droplet of vesicles like this and put it on parafilm. And we took those same EM grids, which again is a slide for the electron microscope. And we incubated that on, this, on the surface of this droplet of of vesicles and some of the vesicles just stick through a charged interaction. So when you flip this over, you have your grid and you have your vesicles like this stuck to the surface of the grid. And then we immunolabel these vesicles. So you have your anti-APP antibody and I'm not drawing this to scale, but just as a schematic and then the secondary antibody uh, for electron microscopy are conjugated to a gold particle because gold is electron dense and it shows up as a Sharpie dot. So again, this is out of scale. But if you look at the next figure, figure three, you see an array of images of vesicles and the vesicles show up as a nice circle, and the APP shows up as Sharpie dots. And so we were very happy to see this. It was very interesting to see the labeling of the vesicles with APP. And what was surprising to us and, and 
unexpected. We didn't know what we would see. We thought that maybe you would see a vesicle with gold particles spread out evenly across the vesicle. The APP is sort of everywhere. But it turns out that that's not really the case. If you look at those images, you can see that the APP sort of clusters at one point on the vesicle. And we thought that that was very interesting. It wasn't just evenly spread out like pins in a pin cushion. They were clustered somehow. And so we decided to try to bind these vesicles to microtubules. So let me erase this. Okay, so now if we have our vesicles that we purify. And we take these vesicles and we add them to microtubules in the presence of taxol, which stabilizes the microtubules so that they don't fall apart and depolymerize. And we add AMP PNP, which causes the kinesin to bind to the microtubule, and the kinesin is attached to the organelle, so you end up getting vesicles now attached to microtubules, like this. And then we label these organelle microtubule complexes for amyloid precursor protein. And if you look at figure four, now what we see are vesicles attached to microtubules like this. And the gold particles show up at the organelle microtubule interface. So in between the organelles and the microtubules. We know that the kinesin must be between the organelle and the microtubule because kinesin is attached to the road and is attached to the vesicle, either directly or indirectly. Our final experiment was just to go back into the axon and extrude some cytoplasm. Like, ooh, and then incubate our grid on the cytoplasm, and then when we flip it over, there should be microtubules there and vesicles, and we label organelle microtubule complexes in the cytoplasm itself, and we found a similar result. That is, you end up with the APP showing up in between the organelle and the microtubule. So, that suggests two models to us. One is that if you believe Kamal, then you have a vesicle like this. And now we think that there are many APP molecules like this. And somehow, the APP attaches to kinesin. And forms the trailer hitch model of Kamal. But if you don't believe that, and you believe Lazaroff, then you still have APP here. But the kinesin binds in some other way to the vesicle. It could still be, it could be direct like I've drawn here, or it could be indirect through some other trailer hitch type of protein. But in this case, the APP is not the thing that links the organelle to the micro uh, to the motor protein. But it still suggests that if APP shows up in between the vesicle and the microtubule, 
that maybe it's involved in the transport process in some mechanism or that it has some microtubule related function. Interestingly, there's another protein associated with Alzheimer's disease called tau, and tau is also a microtubule associated protein. So it seemed interesting to me, or it does seem interesting, that these two different proteins, APP and tau, may have a microtubule related function, and that microtubules might be intimately involved in either the wild type function of APP or with Alzheimer's disease. And this is what we're currently pursuing in my laboratory. Okay, you guys, that's it. Week three is over. I hope you guys are safe and well. And please let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.